This is the third and final part of the interview series featuring Greg Hughes, Superintendent of the Khartoum American School. Okay, so just following on from those uh, the special challenges, obviously, of security, which is uh, in some places actually a, a fairly big concern, mm-hmm. are there any other sort of special challenges such as uh, food? Um, I know in some places alcohol is not allowed in certain countries, and mm-hmm. how does the school deal with that with staff from Australia, for example, who are fairly keen on those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, how does that all work? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. I mean, obviously there's some adapting that has to take place on everyone's behalf. I mean, when you live overseas, you, it's a good thing to adapt to the, to the climate. It's a good thing to be able to adapt to the food. It's a good thing to be able to adapt to the, the laws of the country. And I think, uh, I think that's something people have to look into before they, they actually head off. I mean, I've been offered jobs before in places where I couldn't uh, drink alcohol, for example, and at that stage of my life I made the decision they weren't for me. But I think uh, everyone has to make the decision on where, whether they can fit into a country. Personally, for myself, I'm very happy with the fact we're moving to Khartoum. It's a very wholesome environment. I think people could get access to alcohol at embassies, etc., but if you want a nice place to raise your children and drink lots of cups of tea, I'm sure that's a... A wonderful alternative for us, but uh, getting back to your question, are there any other challenges? I think, I think uh, for an administrator, I think the biggest challenge is actually getting people to come, getting those quality teachers who can actually come and fit into your school. That's one of the biggest challenges for me, and it takes up a lot of the, a lot of the time of uh, of a of a school administrator. So, do you think um, it, does it help, or is it something you look for that someone has? Uh the language of the of the country they're going into, or mm. or another language such as French, um, some of the the more international sort of languages. No, that's a good question. Um, you know, to be honest, I think um, one of the one of the wonderful things about working overseas is the adventure, and I think it, it wouldn't be an adventure if you're always going to somewhere where where people are always speaking a language you know. And actually, a lot of the teachers we we hire. Uh, lifelong learners. They look for that challenge, they look to be learning all the time themselves and part of the adventure and part of the fun of being overseas is learning a language. I encourage uh, whole, wholeheartedly for our teachers to start learning the language. They don't have to come in with any of the language but if they start learning and they can just say some simple phrases like hello, how are you, I understand you, I don't understand you, etc. And if they build from that then obviously they're going to start being endeared by the local people and then their time abroad is going to be much more fun. I think those people who isolate themselves, they stay within the one community, they then become they become bored in that community and they, they lose their motivation. That obviously is not, not an ideal. So I think learning the local language, learning the local customs, being able to fit in, being respectful of those their rules and regulations and laws, I think they're all important parts of of working overseas. Okay, so what are the uh, what are the benefits? Um, obviously, you, you've mentioned things like um, for people who like to travel, uh, the adventure, a new place, um, learning the new systems, that sort of stuff. But what are the uh, sort of what's the package that you get? So the salary and, and any other things that come with that. Well, obviously, you know, we we do our best to take care of our teachers, and we we give them the best salary package and the best benefits that we possibly can. We, we give them medical benefits, we give them a flight home every year, we make sure that their the housing is of a good quality standard, etc. The salaries we offer are tax-free. And we, we also do our best to make sure that we put on little functions throughout the year to make sure people are, people are adapting and they're, they're not feeling left out and they're feeling like they're not, um, they're not being listened to or looked after. And so we do our best, but it obviously is a challenge when every other school is doing their best as well. There really is a bit of competition out there to make sure that you can, you can not only uh, hire quality teachers but retain them. And getting them to stay beyond the two-year contract or the three-year contract is often something that you look forward to, to try and to work towards. Okay, so I guess to round up our series then... Mm-hmm. Are there any sort of uh, special tips that uh, anyone who's um, listened to these three shows, uh, who's interested, any sort of special tips about uh, how to get into it, what what they should be looking for, anything that you've learned from uh, probably what ten plus years of experience overseas in this area? Yeah, no problem. I think I think um, you know I've I've obviously worked with a lot of administrators and teachers throughout those. I think it's been like fifteen years now, Darren. It's been a long time, but I think the the thing that's come 
that stands out to me is some people will fit in and some people won't. And I think you've got to first of all ask yourself some questions. Am I prepared to live this lifestyle? Am I prepared to work overseas? How flexible am I? Am I going to be able to fit into a country where perhaps I won't know the language? Am I prepared for those unexpected things that really will at times irritate me? And if you if you answered yes, I can do all of that to those questions, I think you're on the on the on the right track. In terms of getting into these schools, obviously you've got to try and You've got to get some experience. You've got to start uh, getting your references together. Make sure that you know you can show the the administrators at your new school that you are a, a team player, a person who's going to work towards um, making your school a better place. Well, obviously, people do not look for a, a, a nine to five teacher or someone who just comes in and teaches their classes. We obviously want people who are going to help grow the school whether or not that means offering extracurricular activities, helping out with the supervision of discos, etc. Those sort of things are all peripheral, but in communities where there isn't a lot outside of the school, they're very, very important. The school, like I said, is the focal point of the community. Parents have high expectations, children have high expectations, and obviously administrators have high expectations as well. But again... I think that um, the hard work that people do put in in these schools are, are well and truly offset by the benefits. And like I said earlier, when you're working with some fantastic kids, when you're working with fantastic colleagues, when you're getting paid a wonderful tax-free salary, and you're getting the opportunity to see the world all in all in the one uh, the one deal, I think there's a lot to be said for that. So there are my tips. Obviously, I mean, if anyone's interested in coming to Khartoum, feel free to send me an email. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to make contact with you, and we could take it from there. But I think uh, number one step, get your paperwork together, sign up for a recruitment agency, start making contact with international schools, be prepared to, to start school. I think we start in uh, August, so make sure that you're ready to start in the middle of this school year, and enjoy yourself. Have a great time. Okay, so uh, I know you're uh, currently in Australia because you're sitting next to me mm -hmm. um, and you'll be going back to Khartoum um, very soon. So uh, we might actually follow you up at some point on Skype and see how the, see how the school's going at some point. Fantastic, um, yeah. To follow on from this. And, uh, yeah, I'd just like to thank you for your time. If anyone is interested, um, you can actually contact me and I can give you Greg's address. We don't want to put that up on the web in case it gets hit by a heap of spammers. Um, but, yeah, anyone who's interested, I can fix that up for you. Um, and, yeah, thank you for your time. Yeah, it's a pleasure, Darren. It's always good to see you. And, uh, and like I said, to all your listeners, um, if you're interested in this career, go for it.